I get to work before the sun comes up and I leave long after it's gone down. This is probably something we could have told you visually or through dialogue, but apparently every studio head demands narration and or reading to get into a script. I haven't had sex in six months with someone other than myself. Wait, is this extract part two? See, this is what concerns me, Nick. You're a punctual guy. You know the importance of being here right at 6 a.m. I see Kevin Spacey dusted off his Swimming with the Sharks character and brought it back for this movie. Also, Kevin Spacey. He's a total f***ing asshole. Swear narrating. eating. When I was a kid, people would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up. And you answered a second narrator, right? I bet you're no shrimp in the department, huh, there, Dale? Yes, this is unacceptable behavior from Dr. Harris here, and if so inclined, Dale could seek legal remedies for it. But the movie is sort of hiding behind the fact that Dale is engaged as the main reason he's annoyed by it. Her actions are wrong, regardless of whether Dale is into it or not. But if you played this scenario with nine other guys, how many would encourage it regardless of their relationship status? I love my job. Another f***ing narrator! If you ask me, anyone who hates their job has no one to blame but themselves. What a f***ing objectively terrible opinion. You're way too cute to be just a FedEx girl. Actual sexual harassment. Also, that's exactly what Prince Harry told her before making her the Duchess of Sussex. Uh, she's cute, huh, Reg? Got another fly in your whip. Ah, sudden voice of the simply brand of juices, smoothies, and nut milks. I've just been waiting to get in there for a while. This company with tons of employees only has one tiny unisex bathroom? What the f***? I've seen gay boys. Yeah. And you're one of them. We're just, just gonna send that without comment, I think. So what? If I uh, was gonna put my balls in honey and shaved coconut, you'd do that too? I would not. Sure? Yeah. Because I've got some coconut. Yeah, but apparently no honey, which was a part of the absurd hypothetical you proposed. So even if Nick wanted to do it, you'd be attempting to put coconut with no natural adhesive on your balls, and that's not how you run a company. Life is a marathon, and you cannot win a marathon without putting a few band-aids on your nipples. They should make that the slogan for band-aids, honestly. That would make a great ad. Drinking scotch this way for any reason. Donald Sutherland character conveniently dies so that Kurt can join in with his friends on the horrible boss plot of this movie. They said his um, heart burst in his chest like a water balloon. Sounds scientific. I'm not entirely certain Nick would want to go for happy hour beers after downing that gallon of scotch earlier. All you did was put you pulled your d out in a playground. I was taking a piss at night. There were no kids. What kind of f***ing lawyer did Dale have to get on the sex offender list for this bull? Also, this is the reason he apparently can't get another job as a dental assistant elsewhere, which sounds like total bull. To force Dale into this horrible boss plot, the movie had to find a way to push him into a corner, and this is the best it could do. The problem with a scene like this, we're already primed by years of fake-outs, from true lies to high fidelity to super bad, to take this seriously. Instinctively, we know this isn't happening, so the shock of it wears off well before Nick throws Harkin out the window. If you don't think that's a sin, check out this Kevin Spacey dummy hitting the car. This couldn't be less Kevin Spacey if it were Christopher Plummer. So I'd make sure that nobody in the industry would ever hire you again? Bullsh**. Uh, no, because they're gonna want my letter of recommendation, right? Without exploring it any further, Nick thinks he's just trapped in his job because of a threat from his employer. He goes immediately from this to, I've gotta kill my boss. Three hours late. What's the deal? I was at your father's funeral. Everything about this scene seems wrong in some way. Like, having a funeral during normal business hours, or not making arrangements with people to inform them that you're going to be there. I have a million other questions, but it all seems to be a setup for the joke that Bobby wasn't at his own dad's funeral. Do not put post-it notes on lamps. That is a fire hazard. I don't want my money uh, going to support monsters. Bobby, the new boss, tells him to cut off a former employee's workman's comp payments, which is, well, even if it's possible, it's not legal. I want you to fire the fat people. Also illegal. Look, judging from the title, I expected the bosses would be assholes, but I did not expect them to be criminals. That feels too far. But then again, the plot here is that they decide to murder their bosses, so what do I know? We're gonna have to let you go. Okay, it's bad enough that he's going through with this, but doing it at the man's desk in the common workroom? That's ice cold. I've just learned that, uh, that Kurt has fired our dear friend Hank here. So here's a ploy by Bobby to make Kurt unpopular in the office. And we're like, yeah, what a shithead. It was Bobby's idea to fire Hank. But honestly, are we supposed to believe that the office would fall for this? Bobby didn't start being a dickhead today. He was always a dickhead, and everyone knows it. That he would come out here and uncredit himself for the firing would be doubly suspicious. Enough of you already today, my dad. On the day of his funeral. Which everyone here knows you didn't attend because of the loud conversation you had about it five minutes ago. Oh, sh Matt Lauer. Yeah, this is pretty revealing clothing, but it's nothing compared to the normal stuff she wore in Friends. Well, you're kind of crossing a line. Because she's naked. Not naked, Dale. Can you see my Nudity semantics. Starting to sound like a little there, Dale. Jesus, this wasn't that long ago, was it? She stood there with her breasts 
Right in my face. Yeah, you know, yours doesn't sound that bad. Making light of sexual harassment just like this whole movie. I've been looking for work for the last two years, it's crazy. I can't even get a job waiting tables. The joke is that this guy with a Yale education recently let go by Lehman Brothers is now giving handies for whatever money he can make. But there's no way someone with his education and experience who is willing to wait tables can't find a job. And since I know you, I'll let you stare into my eyes. I'll do the three of you for a hundred. Kenny. Are you gay now? Oh, is that how it works? Jesus, 2011, I didn't expect you to be progressive, but I thought at least you'd know better than this. My question is, how did she get an unconscious Dale in this position to take this picture? Even if it is possible, it's way too much work for blackmail. So, please prep the patient for the bite wing x-ray. You mean Dale's fiance, the one you just gassed? Don't you take bite wing x-rays when the patient can actually, you know, bite? She took a bunch of photographs of me. It's really f***ing strange that Dale decides that killing Julia is the best option for his situation, rather than just stealing her iPad with the blackmail pictures on it. After that, you might have to worry about the cloud, but finding a hacker is probably easier than trying to find an assassin. Of course, just telling your fiancé what's up is truly the easiest choice, or just caving and having sex with Jennifer Aniston. There are worse fates. Let's put this down. Look around, make sure somebody... Come now! Come now! That's what you get! Jeez, how is this in any way Nick's character? His impatient violence hasn't shown up in this movie so far, and it won't ever again. Two lamps behind Bateman as he walks in, then four more visible lamps in this shot. And you just know there's a fifth block by Bateman here on that other nightstand. And there is! That's seven lamps, and we only ever see half the hotel room. Your ad said you do wet work. That's correct. I urinate on other men for money. Oh, so he mistook a wet work ad for a hitman ad, and he was searching in the men seeking men field? Literally every single joke in this movie is these guys are stupid. Also, wow, yet another super long drawn out gag with the punchline, I'm a dude who performs sex acts on other dudes for money. Look, I know this guy isn't exactly shy about pee, but peeing with the door open is still a sin. Well, I could direct you to a neighborhood with the greatest number of carjackings. You just said that you couldn't sort restaurants based on danger, but you've got a way to do it with carjackings? Why not murders? My man. This movie is racist, man. Racist, sexist, homophobic, and it thinks all of it is hilarious. Motherfucker Jones. How's that? Motherfucker Jones. It's funny because his name is Motherfucker Jones. The skin was glistening, and then I slipped my fingers into her purse. I know that the setup to this is the joke, but seriously, who talks this way about how they got their nickname? Motherfucker just said he didn't want to go by Dean Jones because it was a Disney-ass name. Imagine telling people this story about your nickname. You should stick with Dean if you're going to tell it this way. Bobby's having f***ing stripper parties in his office with the blinds partially open and only Kurt sees it? F*** you. Using Caddyshack as a piggy bank. Okay, but now that Bobby is kissing girls at Hank's old desk and stealing Hank's parking hanger, are none of the other employees who think everything was Kurt's fault gonna speak up or even notice? It's a montage so I can go f*** myself? Jesus, Julia is a dentist. She should know what earwax does to teeth and gums. Could you guys hear that over my raging boner? Most killers are first timers. You wanna pull off a brilliant murder, you gotta act like it's an accident. Failed breaks, gas leaks, suicide. That's five grand worth, huh? Yeah. Nice, isn't it? Sounds like Scooby-Doo. Because as we all know, Scooby-Doo mysteries were all about murdering people. The whole series is like murdering for dummies. As they talk with motherfucker Jones about killing their bosses openly inside the bar, it's amazing no one overhears them. Especially since they talked quietly the first night and motherfucker still overheard them, setting up this too loud conversation. I mean, if we kill each other's bosses, there's no link to us. Except your historic since high school friendship, but whatever. I'm outside, you ready to do a little recon? I have to get Harkin to let me leave a little bit early. Nick does this by making himself vomit, but honestly, I don't even know why he has to go with Kurt and Dale. Why can't they just do some recon by themselves and tell Nick where they are when he gets off work? Even better, why doesn't the movie just cut to them doing recon? Was this vomiting at work scene so vital that the movie wouldn't be complete without it? No one in this humongous open office sees this. It is on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> sure, I mean, King of Kong Steve Weeby is in this movie. It's truly been on like Donkey Kong since the movie's first minute, if you want to get technical about it. Nick. Now this would count as intel, right? Yeah, but why the hell did you have to pick it up to show Nick? It's so you can drop it and leave a mess on the floor, isn't it? The they accidentally do cocaine joke would be more hilarious if it wasn't a repeat of the Marcus accidentally does X subplot in Bad Boys 2 and repeated later in Office Christmas Party, which also stars Jason Bateman, who should know better. Is this his phone? Yeah, that's his phone. Yeah, Bobby's a cokehead, but how f***ing lucky are these assholes that he left his phone behind and that there's no security to get into the phone? Got his contact schedule, weird pictures of him doing awesome sh yeah, but when did you have time to look at it? You picked it up and immediately put it in your back pocket. Then you went into the bathroom and you came out to see your friends doing accidental coke. Even if you pulled it out after that, but before you got back into the car, you'd have done it in front of them and this wouldn't be such a big reveal. Last time the three of us did this... You mean ten minutes ago? You make it sound like it was months ago, but it was right before this. 
just me and Kurt are gonna go in. You're gonna stay out here, not go in and be our lookout. Giving the guy on coke the lookout job. Also, is there any reason why they need to do all this in one night? They're not running against the clock, are they? Seems like their experience at Bobby's house would make them quit for the night and try to plan better. Jesus, I thought it was kind of weird that Bobby didn't have an alarm system, but I really find it strange that Harkin doesn't. I'd like to bend her over a barrel and show her the 50 states, you know? <laughs> I don't know what- I don't know what that means. God damn it! But also, Jason Bateman would rule at CinemaSense. Angry Birds on the phone is a super dated reference, though I admit that when this movie came out, it did feel like Angry Birds would be eternal. Dale presses the replay button on Angry Birds and it takes him to the level selection screen instead of the level he just played. That's a fucking lie, goddammit. Do you know how much Angry Birds I've played? Do you want to f with me on this? I have a statue of the mighty eagle in my driveway that makes it very hard for guests to park at my house, but at least they know my power. Guy with a peanut allergy randomly picks up a sandwich bag that very well could have peanut butter in it. I know Harkin is an asshole, but surely he doesn't just pick up random bags smeared with food that might kill him, even if he is pissed at the littering. Also, yet another incredible convenience that just falls in the lap of our inexperienced would-be murderers. While Dale appears to be killing Harkin, Nick and Kurt scramble to get downstairs, and Kurt falls over a couch, causing Bobby's phone to fall out onto the floor, the screenwriter said, trying to convince themselves at 3.30 in the morning. If Nick and I were in prison, who do you think would get raped more? The comedy just flows. So Dale starts sweeping tons of peanuts into his basket from the display around stomach high. And when the movie cuts to the medium shot, all the canisters from that level got restocked. And the movie lies and tells us that the whole time he's been taking peanuts from the chest high level. No one will be seated during the buddies create a self-inflicted traffic jam in the parking lot scene, watching The Notebook. While well, it's a nice twist to this movie that Harkin ends up killing Pellet, it's weird that he gives zero f**ks about potentially being seen. And he's wearing a white jacket and is taking off in a very recognizable vehicle. The idea that Harkin could walk right by Nick's car both ways and not see him even peripherally is insane. I'm gonna need you to follow us to the station. Kurt's going to end up f**king all this up, but you got a traffic cam picture of this car running a red light, fleeing a crime scene, and you smell alcohol, but the direction is to follow the cops to the station? You realize we can't even mention Harkin now? Talking openly about your crimes in front of other criminals. I was drag racing. You were drag racing. Mm. In a Prius. I don't win a lot. I really honestly think Jason Bateman is the only actor who could make this as funny as it is. Very few could hit the sincerity note he hits here. The line is funny without it, but he makes it ten times funnier. Hey! Hey! hey. Back. Wait, does mother have a residency at this bar? Did they just know he'd be here? You guys ever see the movie Snow Falling on Cedars? But what happened was is that I took a video camera into the movie and I bootlegged it. The obscurity of this movie and the unlikely event of it being bootlegged is part of the joke's appeal. But I'm sending it anyway because Snow Falling on Cedars came out in 1999 and there were literally a hundred other movies you bootlegged before that one. And there wasn't a theater in the world that would have cared about you bootlegging that movie. Watch out for the cat. Surprise! Oh, give me a break. The idea that Kurt, who earlier tonight had apparently ravaging sex with Jen Aniston's character, would still succumb to the power of boners for a married woman he literally just met over the plan to avoid prison is unbelievable. Kind of like Kurt's real life odds with women this hot. Wow, someone doesn't know their husband enough not to know he hates surprises. She's just about as clueless as Manny and Gina in Scarface. Jesus, Kurt f***ed a lady from Happy Gilmore in like 90 seconds. I mean, honestly, who lights f***ing 12 candles before getting into the bath? There's plenty of light coming from above, so she did this purely for ambiance, which is ridiculous. I mean, the cell phone, the wine, the 12 lit candles, she is f***ing asking for some kind of disaster. Also, you cannot keep your hands and arms this f***ing dry when taking a bath. I don't care how hard you try. Her arms right now are the product of set assistants toweling her down after she got into this tub. That's Harkin, Lewis! How the f*** did Harkin find them in traffic? I'll spit on your heart. What else? It'll dance on your okay. boobies and it'll jump oh. down on your butt! If it weren't for the subtitles, I'd have absolutely no clue what Dale is saying to Julia right now. There's like way too much going on in this scene. Why ruin perfectly good phone sex with all the other supposed intrigue going on? I never thought a climax where Jennifer Aniston is literally pleasuring herself could ever feel this unsexy. This movie has a personal vendetta against my boner. <laughs> and I'm too scared of femoral artery to shoot myself in the leg. If I had to shoot myself, I'd do it in the arm or the foot. You're right, I would never do it at all, but if I had to, I would definitely not shoot myself in the goddamn thigh. Just play the tape. Play the tape. It's a digital recorder and they've been calling it a tape this whole goddamn time? And I'll dance on your boobies and I'll jump up and down on your butt! There is no goddamn way that recorder picked up Dale and pretty much only Dale during all that commotion that was going on during that phone call. Plus, Kurt was the one with the recorder and he was driving while Dale was in the back seat.
There's nothing on here. Yeah, mainly it's so that the nav guide, Gregory, can ex machina the situation with some bullshit about how it records everything for quality control. Honestly, it'd be totally fine if the recorder just kept working and we didn't ever have to hear about the nav guide again, but I guess that's fun. It's fun, right? I should mention that it is nav guide policy to record all conversations for quality assurance. You sure waited a long f***ing time to speak up, Gregory. Lucky for Kurt. There's no laws in the books against putting people's toiletries up your ass. There wouldn't need to be. He broke and entered into that house. Also, you just said the cops forgave your crime because you helped bring in Harkin. So why can't the toothbrush thing be just another of your crimes that got forgiven? Also, doesn't anyone want to ask why Harkin, Nick's boss, went to kill Pellet, Kurt's boss? Even the heroes of this movie don't really know what happened, but they are ridiculously incurious about it. And if the movie is saying that the detectives really did find Kurt's butt cheese on all of Pellet's toiletries, wouldn't that raise at least one red flag about their involvement? In the end, yes, they did didn't do so much wrong except breaking and entering, but if I were a detective, I'd be asking more questions. Comnodyne made me acting president. <laughs> no, sir. Not on your life. You may have gotten your sentence reduced by cooperating, but you committed way too many crimes to ever be any company's president. This is like Mark Whitaker thinking he's going to be put in charge of ADM after testifying against them for the FBI. Wasting Bob Newhart. If there's anything I can do, obviously, to help you out before the baby gets here, just let me know. What baby? First off, how does he not know about the rule about assuming women are pregnant? Second off, how long has he been working in this office with her? Does he think that she's just perpetually pregnant? Or did she just coincidentally grow larger in size over the last nine months? This is my good friend, uh, Kenny Somerville! Uh, oh, how likely do you do? to succeed! Why is Charlie Day reading cue cards that are off to the right of Jen Aniston right now? Could he not be bothered to learn these lines for this one scene? Seriously, look at his f***ing eyes, man! They are reading! This explains a lot. Target that explosion and fire. If you've ever wanted to know what it's like to probe into the back end of Cinema Sins and learn our deepest, darkest secrets, Behind the Sins podcast is just what you need. Each week, writers Aaron, that's me, today, that's me, and Jonathan, yep, discuss what it takes to create the content that you enjoy on YouTube. Hopefully enjoy. They probably do. I mean, even if they don't, we talk about it. That's true. I guess I'll just wrap this up real quick and let you know that you can listen to Behind the Sins here on YouTube. Or search for the show in your favorite podcast player. Yep. If you told us that simply was the most perfect orange juice in the world. You didn't know. You didn't know. You didn't hear me when I said very important this morning. What good are you? Do you have a brain? Please, Mac, I'm dying to talk about the mail for you all day, okay? Pepe Sylvia, this name keeps coming up over and over again. Every day, Pepe's mail's getting sent back to me. Where do you think this relationship is? Let's all just have a big pee party. Jesus, how many cats do they have? It's the same one, I think. A black cat went past us, and then another that looked just like it. How much like it? Was it the same cat? Hey, officer, he's fooling around back here. Cut it out back there. He started it. I did not. You guys gonna be going through some red lights? I don't think so. My boss was murdered? Oh, wow. What were you doing in his house, Nick? Why were you there? Where were you during the murder? I was making love. I was making love to a woman. Yeah. Murdering some ass. I believe we are free to go. Are we not? Yeah, technically, yeah. Technically is good enough for me. You are technically correct. The best kind of correct. That's for you, hot shot. Speeding and running a red light. While running a red light and speeding! You think that you can blackmail me? You want to talk to me? Or you want to talk to someone else? Because oh, this is my job. 